ever worried about uh, what, if what you see in your hair and your scalp is normal or not normal? This is the theme for today's video, so stay tuned, let's talk about that. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing great today. So today's video, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit more about some worrisome signs that you may see on your hair, on your scalp, that may be a sign of a hair problem or a scalp issue as well. So this is the theme of the, today's video. Uh, I wanted to do this because I see patients every day here at the office with different types of hair loss and some very common symptoms that happen to everyone uh, it may be happening to you or someone you know, and a lot of times they can be a little deceiving. You just dismiss it, well, you know, it's going to get better, or it's just a simple hair loss issue. In reality, they could be the sign and symptom of something more serious that need to be treated so you can preserve your hair and your skin. So uh, we'll go over some of the most common signs and symptoms and what they might mean, okay? So let's start with a very common clinical presentation that I see here at the office almost every day. It's, uh, you know, my hair is shedding. I'm seeing a lot more hair in the shower uh, every day. And so, no other symptoms. My scalp feels okay. It's just that I see a lot of hair in the brush and a lot of hair in the scalp. So, you can probably relate to that. Physiologically, we all have these uh, cycles of hair growth and hair resting, right? So, the growth phases that we, uh, that we have. But at some points in our lives, different types of situations can put us in a, in, a, in a position where the hairs will shed more rapidly. So it happens particularly in women after, say, a surgery or a stressful event or some trauma or a general anesthesia for a procedure. Menopause is also a very common cause for that in women where or their thyroid disease uh, flares up or they start having thyroid issues. And one of the symptoms is just uh, shedding of hair. Lots of hair in the shower drain, lots of hair in the brush, a lot more than they're used to see. Keep in mind that we all shed about 100 to 150 hairs every day anyway. That's just normal hair cycling. But what I'm talking about here is excessive hair shedding. That can mean a lot of things. So we can help you figure it out. You need the help of a professional for that. Uh, there are many aspects of this that can be causing the hair loss. So it's important that uh, we dig in and we kind of come to the conclusion of possibly the most likely factors uh, that are affecting your hair so we can treat you and we can get you out of this as quick as we can. One thing that's important too is uh, shedding of hair looks different in different hair types, right? So my hair, for example, is medium caliber, not super fine, not super coarse. It has a little bit of a wave when it grows out. So if I get, say, 50 uh, of my hair shafts and I put it in a bundle and then someone with coarser, thicker hair shaft and a lot more wave to their hair or curl picks up 50 of their hairs like the picture shows here. The person with the uh, um, thickest hair, the coarsest hair and also the curliest hair will have, that uh, their hair will occupy more space so it's going to look like a lot worse. 50 hairs of that person versus 50 of my hairs. So the coarser the hair, the, cr the curlier the hair, the, um, the more it'll show as far as volume. So sometimes you just have to sit down and count the hairs of the patient. A lot of times I ask my patients to save their hairs in little Ziploc bags and date them every time they shower, every time they brush, and then bring them to me so I can have an idea of how many hairs they're actually shedding. A lot of times we are, we are in between the 100 and 150 normal hairs uh, that they shed, that we should shed every day anyway, but it's important for us to have that parameter. So the only way sometimes is to count, okay, because a uh, volume of hair can be deceiving. Also, the length of hair, obviously, a lady with hair down to their back versus a lady with shorter hair, if you get 50 of those hairs and compare them, the longer hair will occupy more space. So 50 of those longer hairs will look like a bunch more than 50 of the shorter hair. So all these things need to be accounted for. It's not your job, it's my job. Uh, your job is to let me know what's going on with you so I can help you. There are different stages of thinning also. You can go very easily from a very mild, you know, sort of, you know, scalp see-through uh, to a little bit more area to a, a bunch of areas of see-through. So don't want to get to this point, but if you are at this point already, it's not like there's no hope, okay? We can always treat it, but you've got to let us know as soon as you can. 
the best thing is to start right here at the beginning. We have more hair to save and we can do better for you. Another clinical presentation that we see a lot of times is uh, you start to see your hairline here getting a little bit thinner and also the temples a little bit. This is much more common in African-American women. Uh, this is called traction hair loss and it happens because a lot of times uh, they pull their hair very tight in ponytails or they put some uh, weaves in their hair and that puts a lot of trauma in the hair follicles, particularly on the, around the frontal scalp, like the temples and the hairline. Over time, these stressed out follicles from the trauma will get weaker and they'll get thinner and thinner and eventually you may see almost bald spots. Now, again, my job is to make sure that this is nothing else because there are other conditions that can mimic this. So with the physical exam and the examination here at the office of your hair or even online, I can tell whether you have this or not. These are very common conditions. Again, trauma or attraction, alopecia or attraction hair loss. Very common also and can be treated. So I just need to know and you need to let me know before it gets worse. One thing you can do that's very easy to minimize the damage is to stop using uh, your tight hair do's and putting pressure on those hairs. That way you don't uh, perpetuate the situation. So another common presentation that I see here, it's very common out there, is uh, what's commonly referred to as alopecia. As we've talked in other videos, the term alopecia only means hair loss, right? So every type of hair loss there is, it's called alopecia. So when, you, when a patient tells me, oh, I was told I have alopecia, I know what that means because of it's very common to refer to that that way, but it's not really the correct term. So if you hear that you have alopecia, don't freak out. Um, it can mean a lot of things, right? So, but this is what normally people refer to as alopecia. It's little bald patches of, of hair and scalp. Uh, it can happen anywhere in the scalp. Uh, and sometimes you have more than one. Sometimes you don't even know, like this patient here, his, his uh, hairstylist uh, warned him about that because it was in the back of his neck, like in the nape of the neck here on the right side. He couldn't really see it. So his uh, hairstylist said, hey, you got a little bald spot there. So uh, in the course that we teach for hairstylists, because uh, again, our, one of our passions is to educate people and so they can help people uh, better, is to uh, uh, teach hairstylists to identify these things so they can refer these patients for treatment because otherwise the patient can't see that they may not, they may not even know they have it so uh, these are very common uh, these lesions are characterized by a pretty completely bald spot they can start small and grow these patient this patient here for example had two of them on the back of the scalp here this patient had it on the beard so it can occur in every area that has hair beard, um, even, even armpits, it can happen on the eyebrows, it can happen on the eyelashes. So if you have hair, it can occur. Basically, it's called alopecia areata. That's the name of it. Again, it's very common. Nobody knows the cause. It's an autoimmune reaction like, like most hair and scalp diseases. Um, it, these are reactions that your body, for some reason, decided to attack the hair. Now, these are not permanent areas of hair loss. So it can be recovered, it can be treated, and a lot of times the hair will grow. Sometimes even if you don't do anything, the hairs will grow back. But with treatment, we can accelerate their growth back. Now this patient here had a quite extended area of alopecia areata. She had good hair on the top, but the alopecia areata really took a lot of her hairs around the temples and the occipital or the back of the head area. And so with treatment, uh, we can regrow the hair. The earlier you start, the better. And sometimes it'll cycle. You'll get better and then it'll come back again. It'll get better, it'll come back again not infrequently when you grow the hair back the hair may grow white or if you had say black hair uh, like this lady here she might grow back with those patches the hair much lighter color that's because some of the melanocytes which are the cells that produce the pigment in our hair same as the produce the pigment in the skin sometimes they get affected by this autoimmune reaction now this reaction if you look at the hair shaft right under the skin or i'm sorry the hair follicle under the skin the alopecia areata inflammation is a superficial inflammation. So the follicle, the little bulb area that's down below, still stays safe. So it's not, normally not a permanent type of hair loss. There are other autoimmune reactions where the inflammation is much deeper on those um, the bulbs there, the bulbs of the hair, and so that can be permanent. We're going to talk about that in a little bit here. Another common presentation is round red patches of hair loss. Now see the difference here. This I'm saying red patches, the other one was not uh, was uh, just bald patches. 
difference is important because sometimes patients will present like patches like this. They look similar to the other one, but they are round. They are round and they have, you can see some inflammation. The scalp looks a little angry, right? Alopecia areata can look like that too, but again, it's my job to make the diagnosis. So when you come to me and you present with a lesion like this, there are things I can do here at the office, very simple. I can put a magnifying camera called dermatoscope in your scalp and it'll show me a magnified image. There are some specific things we look in the hair for alopecia areata. In this case here, it's a fungal infection. It's the, the popular ringworm, right? So fungal infection of the scalp, the fungus go into the hair shaft and it causes the hair to shed. Again, not permanent hair loss usually. It's very common in kids, but it can happen in adults too. The, the key difference here is that there's a little uh, light that we can use that can help me see the fungus and I can see that and I can diagnose you with that. Um, also, the, the presentation of the ringworm, you see a ring, that's why it's called ringworm. The outside ring is nice and red, is inflamed, and as it expands, the center will be healed, and sometimes the hair can start growing back to the center of the lesion. So that's why we got the name of ringworm, because again, a, ra a red circle or a red ring, and then the, the central areas will start to heal and look less red. So when you put it into contrast, um, this is alopecia areata. So you see very little inflammation, if anything. And this here, the scalp is much angrier. Now he has two more lesions right here, incidentally. So these can be treated, again, very easily with uh, antifungals and everything like that, and the hair can be grown back. It needs to be addressed, obviously. So don't just look at these and just let it go. Uh, these has to be treated differently, but they all can grow your hair back. Okay, so another thing that I see here very, very often, and this is, it requires your attention a little bit quicker because these are types of hair loss that can be permanent. Now, remember we talked a little bit earlier about the alopecia areata, autoimmune inflammation, but superficial. These are inflammatory conditions that are deeper to the follicle. They're called cicatricial alopecia. So when you talk about, um, when, you, when you study hair loss or alopecia, the big uh, spread, you can classify them in scarring or cicatricial. That means that that inflammation can cause some scar tissue, potentially uh, permanent hair damage. And you have the other group of diseases is called non-scarring, non-cicatricial alopecia. The female pattern hair loss, the male pattern baldness, alopecia areata, all those things are into the non-scarring category. Now, these diseases we're gonna talk about here are in the scarring category. Now, these are just the most common that are there are a number more that we can see in patients, but they're not very common. And sometimes these are usually worse diseases are so aggressive that you're not gonna just wait. You're gonna come see somebody. You're gonna come see me uh, for that because your scalp would be really bothering you. Now, these can be insidious. It can be hard to tell. So I wanted to look at this picture really carefully here. You see this lady. Um, she came to me with a complaint that her hair line has been, had been receding. Her hairline and her uh, frontal hairline and her temples have been receding over the last few years. She complained a little bit of scalp redness in the area, some itching, but pretty mild. She was also noticing some loss in her eyebrows. Now, these are very common complaints in women, so it doesn't necessarily mean anything bad, right? So now, because I know about hair loss and I'm looking for things, when I started to examine her, I'll show you what to look for. You can, maybe the camera can pick this up, but if you look at her forehead here, right? You notice how the skin is shiny. There's some irregularities to it, some little wrinkles. Uh, you can see the pores of the skin. And then there's almost like a demarcation line, right? right around there. I don't know if you can appreciate that. From that point back towards her hairline, the skin changes. It loses its, its coloration, so you can see how it's Sorry, I was much white, whiter, like a lot less colored, less pigmented. Um, also has no pores, it's really silky smooth. And so all the hair structures here have been lost. So this is what we call scarring or cicatricial area. So as that inflammation started to eat away the follicles and affect the skin, it created scarring. So that's what made her lose her hair. So looking really close at the follicles here, again, with the trained dye that we have for this, we can kind of see that there's some uh, swelling around the follicles. I'll have another picture here to show you better. So these are important conditions. They can be treated to minimize the damage, 
lot of times we can't grow the hair back that's been damaged, but you know, the key is to address it early so we can preserve hair. And these things sometimes they are there for a while, for a few years, and then they get burned out and they stop and it kind of goes away, but it always lingers on the surface. It can always be reactivated. So uh, we need to be treating this probably for a long time. These are two different presentations of the same thing. It can happen uh, into the middle of the scalp here. If that's the case, we call it central centrifugal cicatricial alopecia or CCCA, right? Central because it's in the center of the scalp, cicatricial because it is a scarring type hair loss. Centrifugal because it moves in a centrifugal pattern, so from the center moves away. Uh, and then alopecia because it's a hair loss. So we physicians are not that creative with names. We just put a bunch of names together that describe the lesion. So um, this here, the patient that I showed you before, that lady, that's called frontal fibrosing alopecia. Why? Frontal because, again, frontal hairline. Fibrosis is another term you use to describe scarring or, or um, cicatricial. So in this case, so whoever decided to call it fibrosal instead of cicatricial, but it's the same thing. So frontal fibrosing and then alopecia because of hair loss. So it means a scarring type hair loss. Um, this here, it's another type of presentation of this, and it can happen sometimes in the entire scalp, and it's called lichen planopilaris, or LPP. They are pretty much the same process, just different presentations of it. Treatment is pretty much the same for all of them, and they can all cause scarring and cause problems. I have a close-up here to show you that uh, the changes in the scalp and the hair in a magnified fashion. So if you have this in your scalp, or if you notice this on someone else, if they're having some itching, if they're, you know, their scalp doesn't feel good, um, look for these. You can see here that around the follicles where they come out of the skin, you see these little swollen areas. It's almost like the hair is pushing the skin out of, out of, out of the scalp. And so that's called perifollicular edema or swelling around the follicle, right? And okay, you can always see and also see some redness around the area. So these are signs that we look for for these conditions. And then where the areas have been, the hairs have been lost, like in between, you can see how the skin is pretty white and pale. And uh, so that's where the scar tissue has been formed, okay? So finally we have, uh, these are very common too, pimples and uh, infected hairs. These are very, very common in patients with very coarse hair, with very oily skin, and also in African Americans because of the tight curl of their hair. It just means that the hairs are ingrown. So they uh, either get a lot, of, a lot of sebum production and the gland clogs up and gets infected, um, or a lot of times the hair is just so curly that if they cut real short, the hair will curl up inside the skin and provide these reactions. So these can be treated. Sometimes it can cause some scarring as well from that chronic trauma and inflammation. So the treatment for this is, I mean, of course, when it's in a phase like this, sometimes you have to drain these, you have to put the patient on antibiotics, but the long-term solution for these is just to let the hair grow. So we recommend patients not to shave their beard because it's very common that happens here around the nape of the neck where we normally shave with a razor, right? So we use we tell patients not to do that or not to shave the edge of their neck here with a razor, just kind of let the hair grow a little bit out. It doesn't have to be very long, just have to be out of the skin. So these are very common things that we see every day. Of course, it doesn't cover the gamut of hair loss or alopecia. It will take forever to do that. And the other ones, frankly, are just much more rare. But when I see a patient every time here in the office and I get their history and their hair loss, my mind starts to go through this list of what we call differential diagnosis. So I'm looking to see if I have signs that can kind of guide me towards the, the, right, the right diagnosis. Sometimes you have to do a skin biopsy to get the final accurate diagnosis because these things are not so clear cut as I showed you here. A lot of times, you're kind of in between the diagnosis, you're not sure. So a scalp biopsy sometimes is recommended where we take a little piece of the scalp and the hair, send it out to a doctor that will slice them and look in the microscope to see what's under the skin and let me know. So if you have any of these conditions, uh, you need to be aware of that. So in conclusion, all these things are important, right? Uh, as I presented them, you may be saying, well, yeah, one time I had this, or I went through this excessive shedding when I uh, had my baby, or when I turned into menopause, or I have my cousin had all these little pimples on their scalp and everything. So these are common, they're out there. If you see them, or if you have it yourself, 
make sure that you look for someone like me uh, that can help you, that can kind of do the diagnosis and, and guide you through the process. Treatments for these things are very safe, they're effective. Um, it requires a combination of treatments, a combination of drugs, but they can be treated very safely. As long as we catch it early, we can save a lot of hair too. So I hope you liked this. If you did, please click the like button below. Subscribe to the channel as well so we can keep you informed. We're going to be uh, putting content like this all the time for you as far as educational content. If you have suggestions or comments for other videos, put them down below as well. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.